Welcome to the Original Gangsters Podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein, and uh, we're going to do another quick hitter edition and give everybody another update about what's going on in Canada. I'm on a road trip, so I'm not in my normal um, office space. I'm in a hotel, but uh, I still wanted to uh, file a report because there was some big news that broke out of Canada, and uh, we're going to report that news, and then we're going to um, use the news that was reported by uh, the French Canadian press in Montreal, uh, Journal de Montreal, and the press who reported about uh, Rizzuto mob hitman Freddie Silva, uh, who flipped four years ago. We've learned a lot more in the last week uh, based on some reporting as well as court filings on his debriefings over the last couple of years and what he's told authorities. Um, and again, some of this is already being reported and then we're going to be breaking some news off of that. So the news that came out uh, really gives us some added perspective on how this current war between the Hells Angels and the Rizzuto mob started. And we know that it all broke out into the open in the end of 22, early 2023. Really, when the public became aware, it was March 15th, 2023, with the attempted assassination of Rizzuto Mafia Don uh, Leonardo Leo the Warrior Rizzuto. Um, but if you've been following us here at, at uh, OG Pod, as well over at our companion magazine, The Gangster Report, and you watched... Uh, the Vice six-part docu-series on this war that I executive produced that was on Vice this summer, um, you would have known, or we've, we've been uh, talking about how the tensions between the Hells Angels and the Rizzuto mob, two groups that had worked together for decades and made a lot of money um, side by side as partners, that tensions really started to simmer and boil and bubble in 2019 and it was it wasn't for another three years that everything erupted into a shooting war but um again i think i've buried the lead a little bit so the news that we've come out that we've learned is that a very prominent hell's angels member who we always assumed had died of a heart attack in prison in the spring of 2019. It's now coming out. He was murdered. Uh, his name was Andre Curly Savaggio, and he was a very uh, popular, very powerful member of the Hells Angels who had originally been a member of the Rock Machine, um, who fought the Hells Angels in the Great Quebec Biker War of the 90s. And then in 2000, 2001, he changed sides. According to this new reporting by the French Canadian press, um, Greg Woolley, who was assassinated a year ago uh, in, in, this, in this feud, had bragged or confessed to Freddie Silva uh, about poisoning Curly Savaggio to death in his prison um, while, while Curly was awaiting trial on gangsterism charges, which is the Canadian version of racketeering, um, May 28th, 2019. Again, we everybody had thought it was a heart attack. We now know it was a, a poisoning via fentanyl. And uh, prison guards found Curly in his bed the morning of May 28th, 2019. And there was black liquid um and blood all over the sheets and the and the pillowcase and his mouth and the walls um he had died in his sleep of the fentanyl that he had ingested um hours earlier and we're just learning about this you know in in the public consumption sphere right now now, the stuff that we're reporting exclusively here at OG Pod and on Gangster Report is that this played a role in three years later, the war um, commencing. And we had already 
uh, reported, and we, we've been talking on here about how the March 2019 murder of a Niagara Hells Angel named Dirty Diaz was kind of the first domino to fall. Well, now we find out two months later, the second domino fell. And there's some questions I see about who knew what when and talking to my sources over the last 48 hours, guys in the SQ, some guys on the street. This is something that at first uh, was veiled, but at some point in 21, 22, this became known. And this was, again, one of the things that laid the foundation for war. I'm told that Chit Del Basso, um, who was a part of the Hells Angels side, but had originally been a very prominent Rizzuto mob lieutenant who got kind of pushed out of the Rizzutos and joined Hells Angels, uh, should join the Hells Angels um, side of the war. He wanted to get the Rizzutos out so he could take power of the mafia and run side by side with, with the Hells Angels, but uh, was unsuccessful in, in, in killing Leo Rizzuto and then was killed himself uh, a couple months later in June of 2023. But I'm told that Chit Del Basso was the one that let the Hells Angels know that Curly Savaggio was not, uh, did not die of a heart attack, that he was poisoned um, and poisoned by Greg Woolley. Uh, so it, it's, it's, it, it, it definitely colors up the situation and, and gives us some more insight into how the relationship between the Hells Angels and the Rizzuto mob uh, began to fray. Um, now to give a little bit more detail on why Savaggio was murdered, it's a little salacious. Um, so Maurice Boucher, Mom Boucher, who was probably the most famous Hells Angel, infamous Hells Angel in Canadian history. Um, Greg Woolley told Freddie Silva to tell Mom Boucher that he killed Savaggio as a gift to Boucher um, because Savaggio had been sleeping with Boucher's common law wife and the mother of his daughter. Um, Boucher had been locked up at that point for a decade plus, wasn't coming out. Um, around that same time, he was voted out of the Hells Angels um, for, for insubordinate behavior towards the Hells Angels that were on the street and in power. Um, and I guess some prison recordings picked up Mom Boucher talking to his daughter about uh, the anger he had towards Curly for, for romancing his, his, uh, his woman. So, and then obviously there was bad blood that dated back to the, the, the war in the nineties between the rock machine, which Curly belonged to and the Hells Angels. Um, and then we find out that Freddie Silva uh, has told authorities that himself and Greg Woolley and a couple other people, including Sammy, Sammy the Shoe tomorrow, who died last December, shouldn't die, got killed last December, um, that they had formed an elite hit squad that they called the Federation and that the Federation was put together basically to, to force the Hells Angels out of the Montreal Rackets. So it looks like Leo Rizzuto and the, the powers that be in the Rizzuto mob as far back as the late 2010s, even before the Dirty Diaz hit, it looks like they were making plans to, if not go to war with the Hells Angels, at least push them out of the rackets via violence. Um, out of those three people I just mentioned in the Federation, Silva flipped in 22. Greg Woolley was assassinated in, in, in November of 23, and Sammy the Shoe tomorrow died a couple weeks later in Mexico in December of 2023. So, again, I just, I think, this is really insightful news to be able to now put under the microscope and know that these two 
unauthorized murders, unsanctioned murders, at least in terms of the Hells Angels. Before, if there was ever any issues between the Hells Angels and the Rizzutos, there was a protocol. And if the Rizzutos had an issue with one of the Hells Angels, as they had in the past, they would go through proper channels and, and their issue would be dealt with. In the case of Dirty Diaz and, and Curly Savajo, it looks like the Rizzutos acted autonomously. Um, and then the ensuing tensions that continued to build over the next couple of years and erupted into the war, you know, resulted from this, these seeds being planted, uh, these sub subversive seeds being planted by the Rizzutos. First, Dirty Diaz, who was a, uh, you know, a younger guy, an enforcer, a collector in Niagara, uh, you know, in uh, not in Quebec, in, in Ontario, um, but was very close to a lot of Hells Angels leaders, particularly Teflon Rob Barletta, who went from the Niagara chapter to the London chapter in Ontario. And now he's up in Montreal with uh, Marty uh, uh, Robert and, and, the, and the brass, the Hells Angels brass that are running the Quebec Hells Angels and, and uh, captaining this war. Uh, Marty is doing, you know, what he does, which is being the leader, kind of the day-to-day -day leader of Hells Angel Nation globally, him and Nurgit, and then guys like Barletta and uh, Casper the Ghost, Wume, are, you know, they're the war generals. So those two murders, man, we can't, I, I can't overstate how, what a miscalculation this seems to have been from the Rizzutos. Not that they wanted to make a play, but that they made the wrong play. They executed it, for lack of a better term, um, in ways that came back to haunt them. In the case of Dirty Diaz, you know, the, the hit team that was arrested came from Montreal. So you're telegraphing, you know, literally who ordered the hit based on the hit team's location, where they came from. They came from Quebec to Ontario to, 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 to do the hit. And then in this case, you got uh, Greg Woolley confessing to to this to this hit to, to Freddie Silva, and Freddie Silva opens up uh, with, with the SQ and RCMP in 2022. So again, we're learning more every day, and uh, this thing is as, as fragile and volatile as ever. Who knows? Uh, what the next machination will be, but we'll be there breaking it down for you here at uh, OG Pod. Please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, we're going to be uncovering the underworld like we do 24 7 here at OG Pod and, and the Gangster Report. One city, one region, one country at a time. I'm Scott Bernstein, OG Pod. I'm out.